good morning. I said good morning. There it is. <laughs> you guys go ahead and stand with us. Let's worship together. I'm gonna start off singing about his love and how it awakens us and brings us to life. Can I get an amen? All right. Let's sing. Let's start off singing. It says, there were walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. It's his love for us that has set us free. So here we go. There were walls between us. By your cross you came and broke them down, you broke them down. How's everybody doing this morning? Come on. Aren't you glad that the love of Jesus, man, it awakens you, doesn't it? Some, some of y'all walked in here this morning looking into slumber, but the first song is talking about being awakened, amen? And so from the inside out, you are awakened. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Amen. Take You're a welcome. couple of minutes. Greet the person to your left and your right and tell them, man, you look better than me last Sunday. All right, all right. If you guys would, just have a seat real quick. We're going to get to getting while the getting's good. We have a lot going on this morning. Uh, this is my favorite Sunday. Do you know what Sunday it is? Man, it is Baptism Sunday! Come on! Man, this, this day gets me jacked up, pumped up, fired up, and ready to do something, man. I am excited. This is the day when people take that next step in their relationship with God. And man, if that don't make you excited, there's something wrong with you. So we're so glad to have the new people that are here. Maybe you're here because you wanted to try the church out. Maybe you're here because someone you know is being baptized. We just want to tell you from the bottom of our hearts, welcome home. And we are so glad that you are here. Welcome home home. So listen, guys, we've got a couple of different opportunities for you, uh, for us to reach out and let you know how much you matter to us and how much we, we care about you. So we have connect cards uh, and our ushers have some connect cards. If you would, they're a little blue card. We have them located at the back as well. If you would, we just need some basic information. No big deal. We just want you to know how much we care and how much we love you. And to show that love and care as well, we have a gift that we would like to give you from Connect Chart, <laughs> Connect Church to you guys. And you'll locate that on the right hand side when you walk right out of the sanctuary. If you would just turn that card in, we want to get a little gift in your hands and we want you to know how much we appreciate you guys choosing to be with us this Sunday, okay? Uh, we have a couple of announcements that we're gonna make. The first one is that we have connect groups. Everybody say with me now, say connect group. Man, that's the best whoop I've heard in a long time. Come on now. We got a guy from Arkansas in the crew. He may be our pastor. So he's used to the Sue, Piggy, Woo, Woo, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's also how they call their prom dates. So it's kind of neat. How, too far? Too far? Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. I forgot our worship it. leader. He's also from Arkansas. My bad. But we got some Texans up in this crew right now. Woo! Yeah, see, did you hear? We, we didn't do that. We, we got some bass in our voice in Texas. Uh, so we, I don't know where I'm going that connect groups. Yeah. So we have connect groups. If you have not had the opportunity to join a connect group, man, it's our way of just doing life together throughout the week, man. It's more than a Sunday stroll with Jesus. We're looking at a daily walk with the master and it's good when you have people that you've hooked up with people that you can link up with that can help you on that journey we call life. So we just want you to be a part, go to our website, connectchurchofabilene.com. And once again, it's connectchurchofabilene.com. You can click on groups, sign up for a group. We would love for you guys to be a part. Amen. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is that we have our new merch. New merchandise has made its way into Connect Church of Abilene. Uh, I have every shirt that we have. Uh, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying if you want me to model for it, just call me and we'll set up a FaceTime. I'll try on the different shirts. That way you can know what it looks like on a perfect body. Uh, if you'd like, we could do that. But we do have merch uh, that's set up on the left-hand side. New merch. We got hoodies. We got some shirts you can pre-order. Man, we have anything that you would like. It's great. I, I love going out and people looking at, like, I have a Welcome Home shirt. And they're like, Welcome Home where? I'm like, bam, my sleeve says Connect Church. What do you mean, Welcome Home where? So we're excited 
about the new merch that we have. Are you guys ready to get back into worship? I mean, are you guys ready to worship the Lord, the God of all? Amen. Let's stand to our feet real quick. We're going to pray and we're going to enter back into worship. Lord, we thank you that today is your day. Lord, we thank you that there are people that have made a public confession of their faith, that they live for you and that they will not turn away. So, Lord, let us be encouragers as we see him, Lord. Let us lift them up. But, Father, we know at the end of the day that one single day with you is better than a thousand without. So, Lord, if there's anyone here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord, we thank you that today is the day of salvation. We thank you that the kingdom of heaven will be populated, not because of us, but because of who you are. So we will worship you with all that we have. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. How many believe he is the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus. turn to? Who and what do you turn to? Is it Jesus? Is it, is it alcohol? Is it, what is it? We're reminding ourselves who the way is, who the truth is, who our fortress is, where our hiding place is. It's in Him. There's nothing in this world that's going to satisfy us the way that he can and the way that he does. Let's sing it again. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. In every battle, in every heartbreak, no matter the circumstance or situation, it's you. It's you. You are the rock. You're the cornerstone. Lord, you're my anchor. Let's sing over I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. And I believe you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, you're so worthy. You're so good. There's not a song that can describe it. There's not a song that can, there's no words. All I know to say, Lord, is thank you. How great you are. lift your hands. Father, you are great. You are great, Father. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. 
Father, I thank you for every person that is here today, Father. I thank you for every person that is worshiping you, Father. Father, my expectancy today is that every person that came here today, Father, would receive what you have for them. Father, that we would not leave empty. We would not leave broken. We would not leave hurting. Father, my expectancy is that you, Father, will infill and indwell in our hearts. That you will change us from the inside out. Father, only you know what we are dealing with. Only you know what's going on in our lives. Only you know, Father, what we need. So, Father, I thank you for this morning. Father, I thank you for this morning. How great you are, Father. How great you are. You know, worshiping God, worshiping God charges the atmosphere of expectation. You know what I mean? You know, when we just step back and step out of our own box, <laughs> come on, and we quit asking God to come and, 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 and just rotate around us, you know, and we just start, we just start, you know, getting in His presence, everything changes. You know, the expectancy that we have. I hope you come expecting. Because when you come expecting, you'll never leave disappointed. Because regardless of what's said on this stage or sung on this stage, you'll get what you need to get. And when we worship, we charge the atmosphere. Anybody ever been shocked before by static electricity? You know? Your kids walking around with their socks on, like, and you're like, uh-huh, I know what's fixing to happen. You know, just come up and you know, that's what we do in the spirit when we worship. It's what we do when we pray. We charge that atmosphere. So that God's electricity, come on, that power that he has can just take care of everything we've got, everything we need. So I thank you guys for being here this morning. I thank you for worshiping with us. Because as we worship, come on, charging that atmosphere of expectancy. So Father, we just thank you this morning. Lord, I thank you that every need is met. I thank you that every person that needs receives. And I thank you that you are here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Tell them they look good today. All right, turn, turn to your second choice. Give them a high five. Tell them they look good today too. Come on. Hopefully your wife or your spouse wasn't your second choice, but you know, it is what it is today. You done got caught, so. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Ooh, I like that. So my name is Pastor Adam. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Connect Church, and I get the privilege today of bringing you the word. And today, I know JB already said it. Well, come on, today is Baptism Sunday. Come on. Woo -hoo! Pig suey. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. It's just normal. You know, you get that high. It's just normal to say that. Uh, today is Baptism Sunday. We had 12 people sign up for baptism, 
And then we had another one come to me while we were here this morning. He's like, hey, um, can, I, can I get baptized? And I said, yeah, you can get baptized. Come on. He's got a good-looking beard, too, so we'll see. You'll know when he gets in. You'll know who it was. Uh, and here's the thing. Man, if God puts it on your heart, come on, jump in. Man, baptism. Man, all it is is saying, man, I'm going public. I'm serving God, and I want people to know. Amen? Amen. And so we've got 13 people today that have signed up for that. And, and, you know, I don't know that we've ever had a baptism where only the people that got signed up are the only ones that jumped in. You know, we've had a couple that I think seven or eight are signed up, and we've dunked like 18 to 20, you know. And uh, it's all good. So I encourage you, man, if God puts it on your heart, we've got extra shirts. I don't know if we have extra clothes. Jump in in your jeans. You know, I had to do, I had to do baptism one time in my jeans because I gave my shorts away because we had so many people that needed to get baptized. I was just like, I'll just do it in my jeans. We'll be fine. Go ahead. And so, man, we've got, we've got some kids that are getting baptized today. We've got, we've got man, I'll tell you what. We got, y'all know when he gets in. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. You know, when kids, when kids want to get baptized and say, I'm ready just to let people know that I'm serving God, I mean, they got the rest of their life. Come on, they got the rest of their life to say, this is it, that I love God and that I want to serve him. And so we've got, we've got young ones to, I'm not going to say old, but throw me in that category if I was the one in that age too, so... But uh, I just love it. I love Baptism Sunday. You know, I'm not going to talk very long today. I'm already, yeah, see, I'm already off schedule. So I'm not going to talk very long today because a lot of you guys came to watch the baptism, and I love baptism. That's, it's, it's one of my favorite things. So I did want to, you know, one other thing that I wanted to mention was JB had mentioned it too, but small groups. Get in a small group. Don't do life alone. Come on, we all need somebody at some point in our life to say, I need help. And if you can't raise your hand on that, you're lying. I just say it. Because we've all been at that place. Pastor has been at that place before where I just say, man, I just need some help. I need somebody to talk to. And we've all been there. So we've still got plenty of, plenty of room in some of our groups. Some of our groups are getting full and probably will close them down. Others, we've, we've still got room for that. We have a men's group. Come on, men. If you, if you just want to learn how to be a better husband, just a better man, just a godly man, Thursday nights. Come on, that's my group. I'm going to throw a little, little plug in there for that one. No big deal. I can. I'm up here. And then, you know, if our, our last series, um, I encourage you guys to go listen to it. It's, it was Money Matters. And, you know, I think it was a great series. And I hope that a lot of you guys learn a lot about that, about the finances of God and how he wants to give to us. Because that's what it was about. It's about, having, it was about receiving. It wasn't necessarily about giving. It's about receiving from God. And so that, that was a, a great series that we did. And then, you know, something I wanted to mention to you guys, you know, we have a missions budget that we help people out with, right? And there was a pastor down in Corpus Christi. So uh, for you guys that are new or maybe you haven't been in a while, we're a portable church. So like we don't own this building. This is a event center, um, 201 Mesquite. If you want to have an event, this is a great place to have it. They've got anything from weddings to, I think last night they had a, a winter formal uh, for one of the schools here. So just a great place to have an event and to have a church. Come on. Sunday mornings, 1030. Uh, but we had a pastor friend of ours um, that, man, he was in, he, he's down in Corpus Christi. And so because we're portable, we set up everything in here. So when you walk in on Sunday mornings, when you get here after 9.45-ish, everything's set up. And so when you walk in, you wouldn't even know. I had somebody that started helping us a few weeks ago that was like, man, I didn't even realize, you know, that you guys set all this up. And so he comes in and starts helping. And so we set up, and then after service, we tear everything down. But we're, we're, we're blessed because Charlie has given us a place to store our stuff here so we don't have to put it on and off trailers. So I'm, I'm saying all this because we had a friend, a pastor friend of ours in Corpus Christi. They're portable also. And they set up and they tear down, but they have to put it in a trailer every week. And so they actually had all of their equipment stolen. 
And so everything they had, thousands of dollars, trailer, everything gone. And so I just want to let you know that out of our missions budget, we sent them some money. We had several other churches uh, that's in our organization, Next Level. Um, we had several churches that sent them money, so we're, we're helping them. I just wanted you guys to kind of know where some of your money was going, amen? Let you know that we are helping other churches, that, that, that what we do matters. And so because we had money in our missions budget, um, I just got on the phone. I said, hey, I said, I'm just, Ray, I'm just going to send you, I'm going to just send you some money. He said, man, he said, I appreciate that. Thank you. He said, we'll be praying for your church. So just know, come on, just know that we're helping. It's not just here. Come on, we're all part of the kingdom. Amen. It's not just Abilene. Corpus Christi needs it too. Come on now. And so I, I know they're blessed, and I know they're, we had, we had another, um, actually the head of our organization, um, we have a hundred and something churches in our organization. Uh, the head of that, they gave them a brand new $10,000 trailer, 20 foot, I think, 20, 25 foot trailer, so they'd have that. And then a lot of other churches was, were given to them so they could buy equipment. You know, I mean, because anything from speakers to all of their drum, I mean, everything, they lost everything. And so uh, we were just able to bless them. So I just want to let you guys know um, that we did that. Um, so something I want to encourage you guys. We're going to start a new series today. And, and I told some people we we're going to start one series, but we're actually not going to start it yet. I know they're going to be a little bummed. But uh, so the next two series that we're going to do are probably two of the most important series that I've probably ever preached. And, and those two series, the one we're going to start today is just simply called Words. It's, it's what we speak and how we speak and how powerful your words are on every level, whether it's a social level or a spiritual level, how powerful your words are. Because the, the Bible says that through your words, life and death. So you can speak life into existence or you can speak death into existence into your circumstances and so we're going to be talking about that that's what we're starting today but our next series is simply going to be the holy spirit himself so we're going to be talking about the spirit of god and so i've been wanting to since we started the church i've been wanting to do this series on the holy spirit and uh, god finally released me to go ahead and do this series and it actually the series is going to run us right up to easter so I'm excited about that. And then we're going to start a new series at Easter called I Am Connected. Um, no pun intended. Actually, it was. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's called I Am Connected. And so those are our next three series that we're going to be starting. So I'm excited about them. I hope you guys come. If you don't have a home church, welcome home. Just come join us, you know. Here's what we say. Just come until God says go somewhere else. Come on. You know, if you're not sure, just come until God tells you to go somewhere else. And so we are glad to have you, and we just say welcome home. So today, I just said it, today our series is called Words. You know, those things that we speak every day. Come on. You know, I don't, I don't get off the phone with my wife or leave the house without telling her that I love her. You see, she didn't grow up in a home where her parents said, I love you. She didn't grow up in a home where when you, when you left, you know, I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's just like, bye, I love you. Off the phone, bye, I love you. It's just like, I, I, I probably even just tell you guys that because it's, it's just a habit, you know what I mean? If I'm on the phone with you and I accidentally say, bye, I love you, it's just a habit. It's not, you know, it's nothing weird, man, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things because I have conditioned myself to make sure that I am sharing the love of God especially with my family and you know it's awesome because he's not here so i'm going to share this my oldest son he's 22 you know he yeah he works out with kurt you know what i mean just a manly man you know what i mean and, but he'll even like he'll be like he'll be in a car with his friends and i know when his friends are around and i he's just conditioned you know it'll be like you know if his friends are around it'll be like i love you you know what i mean it, it was just like it's just like one word you know i love you you know what I mean? And, and I know, oh, he's in a car with friends going somewhere or doing something. You know what I mean? But it, it's just like one word. And, and, and it just, man, it just, and, and every time, in times when I hear people in the background, I think, all right, you know, he's not, he's not going to say anything, but I'll say it. You know, I'll say, man, I love you. You know, we'll see you when you get home. And he'll be like, I love you. You know what I mean? And I just, it just, man, my heart. 
because, man, he's got such a good heart, and I just want to train him up the right way. And so the words that we speak, the words that we put out, not only to our family but to everybody else, are so important. You know, um, on average, so I, I looked at a couple of different things, and, and one of them said that on average that we speak 7,000 words a day. And a lot of those words are repetitious. You know, I probably do that up here on Sunday mornings. You know, that's the reason I don't go home and I don't say anything. You know, I get, I get my feel on Sunday mornings up here. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, the I love yous. You know, I may, I may say that 10 times a day, you know, to different family members in different times. But they say that on average that we speak about 7,000 words. And then I, I saw another one that said this, and this is probably more true than, than the 7,000. Uh, someone said that, that women, excuse me, women speak 20,000 a day. And men speak about 13. So it, it seems good. <laughs> it seems good that that's probably pretty close. Okay. See, see, the guys are really smart. They didn't say amen right there. And so it's good. You know, I got the little, you know, I, I got some of that. I saw that. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, another one said that, you know, it's pretty close that, that women speak about a little over 16,000 and men speak somewhere up in the 15,000. So, you know, it's, it's all over. Whatever you read, you know, whatever they've done, it's all over about how many words we actually speak in a day. You know, you have those people that, um, and I, I've, I've worked with them before, you know, you have those people that just won't be quiet. <laughs> I got a, somebody out here is like, oh yes, you know, uh, they, they don't want to point to the one next to them, you know what I mean, it's okay, you don't have to point them out, you know, and then you have people that just, man, I mean, I, and, and honestly, except for like Sunday, when I am like, you know, talking to everybody and meeting with everybody, I don't, I don't really have a need to speak a lot, just to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of odd, I guess, I'm, I'm an extrovert, but man, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm, I'm just happy at home by myself. You know what I mean? And so, but the words that we speak when we're around people are that, you know, my wife the other day, um, she, she, uh, she looked at me and she says, uh, are you even listening to me? And I, I, I didn't say this. But I thought, that's an odd way to start, start a conversation. And then it dawned on me that it probably wasn't the beginning of the conversation. So um, the words that we speak, um, we also need to listen to what other people are saying. And all the wives said, because I'm... 100% sure that wasn't the start of the conversation for her, but that was the start of the conversation for me. Um, I know this. God gave us two ears and one mouth. My mama used to tell me that a lot. You know, she said, you need to listen about twice as much as you speak. Uh, yes, ma'am. How many say yes, ma'am to mama still? Come on. <laughs> Come on, we got hands are like, yeah, I don't care how old you are, you know. You know, the Bible says to honor your parents, amen. And so that's, I don't care how old they are. I don't care, you know what, we honor our parents. Come on, all the kids in here, you, got, you need to be honoring your mom and dad. You know, in, in, Proverbs, in Proverbs 18, <clears throat> it says it like this. And I, I love this, and this is out of the Message Bible, and they probably already got it up there. It says, answering before listening is both stupid and rude. Come on, somebody. You know, when your mama told you it's rude for you to be talking while she's trying to talk, she got scripture to back her up. Come on now. This God's just like, hey, you know, before you answer somebody, you need to listen to them, right? And, you know, there are phrases, all right? Husbands, listen to me. Y'all listening? Give me an amen. amen. All right. Listen to me. There are phrases that as husbands, we don't need to say to our wife. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I only got one amen from a woman on that one. All the rest of y'all are like, come on, Pastor, just give it to them. You know, we don't need to say things like, you remind me of my mother. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not the way to start any conversation, just so, or in the middle of a conversation, because I, for me, it would be the start of a conversation. Um, you know, we don't need to, to, to tell your wife, just get over it. Oh, see? See, that was a good one. Did y'all hear everything? It was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, to, to tell your wife just to get over it, mm. See, see, she's your helpmate. Come on. She's your partner in this thing. And you telling her just to get over it, yeah, you know, you're probably going to have to find another place to sleep that night, just, just so we're honest about it. You know, another thing, husbands, that we don't need to say to our wives is, don't take it personally. Oh, yeah. You know, that's another one that, that you, just, you just take it from pastor. It's not something you need to say, okay? May have said that once and won't ever say it again. So, let's just so we're clear at that. Um, you know, don't tell your wife, just relax. And now, now let, me, let, me, let me clarify that one. You know, if you want her to lay down on the bed and say, it's a, you know, just, or lay down in, on the couch and just relax, then, then yes, you go ahead and relax. But if she's like up, up in your grill about something and you're like, just relax, you know, that's probably not the right time to phrase that exactly like that. Amen? Um, one phrase that, that I learned not to say, and, and actually, so I have to preference this because I learned not to say it early on, and then later on my wife was like, hey, you know, you need to tell me um, if this is right or wrong. Um, and, and one thing, you know, is, um, uh, is, is that what you're wearing? Yeah, so I said that a few times and got this look of like, you know, you're still breathing and may not be in a few minutes. You, you know what I mean? That look of, of confusion from her. Um, and and, and, and here's, here's the big one. Are you ready? Everybody listening, right? Ryan, you're listening, right? Come on. Because they, in case you didn't know, you get, they throw traps out. I'm sorry. They throw traps out. You know, when they ask you, does this make me look fat? Do not answer with, that makes you look fat. That's not the answer that they're wanting you to speak back to them. They're wanting you to say, no, that doesn't. So, husbands, just practice, no, it doesn't. Okay? So now, wives. <laughs> <laughs> so wives there are phrases that you don't need to speak to your husband and everybody got real quiet because the guys are like the guys are like we need to make sure they hear this okay everybody just calm down you know the phrase for 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 a husband when 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 a wife comes up to you and and mine has done it and it's not something, man, it just throws you into a whirlwind regardless. Is We need to talk. I don't know what it is about that phrase that just kind of, you know, there's a different way of saying that, ladies. Just so you know, there's a different way that you can word, you know, that, hey, we need to talk. How about, hey, you know what, I would really like to have a conversation about this. You know, I, but this, hey, we need to talk. And it may be the, the way you inflect your voice. You know what I mean? And yeah, you ladies know what I'm talking about. Don't act like, yeah, okay. So um, this is a big one because here's the thing. You should know how I'm feeling. No, I shouldn't know how you're feeling. I just want to make, and I, I'm really trying to help here because these are words that we speak and what we don't realize is that the other person doesn't understand what you're saying. And I want you to understand that, that phrases that men and women, in case you didn't know, are different. Like, you guys can think, women can think about a about hundred different things at once. We're good for two, maybe, on a good day. And if football's on, definitely just one. 
I'm just letting you know there's one thing that we're thinking about. So looking at us during, especially when football's on and saying, you should know how I feel, it doesn't work. Because again, the conversation may start with, are you listening to me for us? And it does happen. You know, there are things like, uh, um, you know, wives, when you tell your husband, I hate your friends. You know, that's a, that's a gut shot for us. You know, they may be lifelong friends that we've had forever. And these are just phrases and things that when we say them to each other, we don't realize the impact they have. Amen? Um, you know, when you, when, when, and my wife, she says this all the time, um, and, and, you know, she's, she's in the nursery, so she's going to have to listen to this online. So, um, so, uh, you know, and she doesn't necessarily say it like this, so it's, it's really a lot better, but, you know, when you tell your husband, hey, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, okay, so the one time that we want to talk about something, you know, come on, and you say, I don't want to talk about it. He's letting, how do I phrase this correctly? I got to walk, I got to, as a pastor, I got to tread ground one way or the other. Come on now. I got, I got to tread lightly sometimes. And, uh, and you know, you know, the thing is, is that when we, when we talk to, to each other and we speak words to each other, you know, Ephesians, Ephesians 4.29 says this. It says, let no corrupt talking come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion and may give grace to those who hear it. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up. You know, over the years, and, and this is something, you know, when, when we started having kids, when Farron and I started having kids, um, you know, Bailey is our oldest. He's 22. We have a 19-year-old uh, a daughter who will be 20 this year that's in, in, in Bible college in Alabama. Um, she better not come home saying roll tide. Um, and then we have, we, we've, got a, we've got an 11-year-old uh, that's in class. And, uh, uh, you know, Sunday mornings, if you're here setting up and you want to know how to set something up, our 11-year-old, he's the one to talk to. That boy is a set-up machine. But you know, when, when we started having kids, um, I just, can I, can, I, can I be honest with y'all this morning? I didn't want kids that early in our marriage. It was a year and a half into our marriage. I had just, I think I just turned 21. And, and, and Bailey came along. And so for me, I was angry from about age 20 to last week. No, I'm just kidding. From about age... <laughs> Fair would have said yesterday. But uh, so <laughs> for, the, for the first probably 15 years of our marriage, I was just angry. You know, I was angry because, you know, you know when, when Bailey came along, I, I didn't, I didn't want to have kids that early. Um, and so... The way that I talked to my wife and the way that I talked, you know, yeah, now don't get me wrong. I love my wife and I love my kids, but when you're angry about something, come on, when you're angry about something, sometimes you don't realize how you say things. And so for, for many years, you know, my wife would have to tell me, you know, maybe you need to phrase that differently with Bailey when he was growing up, when he was young. Maybe you need to say that differently. And it really came home to me one day when we were driving home and, and Bailey was in the back seat of, of the car and he was in his car seat and I think he, I don't know, uh, two-ish, just, no, it just, it had to be, he couldn't, just around one and a half to two. And uh, we were coming home and, and we lived on this really sharp curve and it was kind of an S curve. And so you had to slow way down in the middle of the curve in order to, to get off on, on the driveway that we lived. And so I'm coming out, and this car is like riding me, like, you know, 
bumper to bumper. You know, some of you do that. Don't act like you don't. You know, they were just like up on me. I couldn't even see the lights, right? I couldn't even see their lights of the car because they were so close to me. And, and we pull in the driveway, and like I, I had to slow way down. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, you know, I can't fishtail it coming into the driveway. I, I could, but I'd have gotten in trouble for that too. You know, so I had to slow way down and, and turn into the driveway, and Bailey was in the car seat in the back, in the back, and that car got right up on me, and I thought he was going to hit us. And I said, get off of my butt. And I just said that out loud, right? And out of the back seat, out of this two-year-old came, get off of my butt. And that was my aha moment of what I spoke was heard. You know, we speak a lot of things in life, and we don't realize that the things that we speak are heard. You know, there's a, let me find it here, there's a quote that says, be careful with your words. Once they are said, they can only be forgiven, not forgotten. You know, when we speak something to somebody, and maybe we're just having a bad day. Come on, maybe we're just in that place in our life that we're just, we're just having a bad day, and we just say something that we shouldn't have said. During this series, I want us to realize that our words matter. That what we say to our children, that how we say things to our kids, how we say things to our spouse matters. And it not only matters physically, but it matters emotionally and it matters spiritually. So we're going to dig in during this series. We're going to dig into the way we talk to each other and the way we talk to God. Come on. And how our words matter to the people around us. You know, our, our scripture for the series is Proverbs 18, 21. And I love this in the message. It says, words kill and words give life. They're either, they're either poison or fruit. You choose. I love that. They're either life or they're death. They're either poison or they're fruit. And then that last little phrase, you choose which one they are. You choose which one. It says it like this. In the, in the Good News translation, it says, what you say can preserve life or destroy it. So you must accept the consequences of your words. So those scriptures, that scripture, that's the basis for what we're doing because we have a choice what we speak. And we have a choice how we speak it. Amen? So my hope that through this next three weeks of this series, I hope you guys come and I hope you guys listen and I hope you guys learn some things about the words that we speak and how we speak them. Because it's so important. So important. So let me pray for you guys this morning. Can I do that? Can I pray for you guys this morning? Dearly Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for every person that is in here, Father. Father, your word says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Father, a lot of times we sin by the words that we say. So Father, I just help us. Help us over this next three or four weeks to realize that our words matter. And the way that we speak them matters to the one receiving them. So, Father, I thank you for every person that is here this morning. I thank you that their hearts are changed, their life is changed. I thank you that you are, you are indwelling in them. 
And so I just want to take a moment. If you just keep your eyes closed and your head bowed this morning, I just, I just want to do this this morning. I've just got this on my heart. If you're in here this morning and you say, I have never followed Jesus, but you know what? I want to. You know, maybe you say things all the time that you just are taken the wrong way. And maybe this series is going to be for you. But maybe you say, you know what? I just want, I want to follow this Jesus that you're talking about, this God that you served. And so, you know, I want to give you that opportunity. And I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come up front. But I just want to know who I'm praying for. So if you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus, or maybe you, maybe you followed him at one time and, and you fell away and today was one of your first times to come back and, and start serving him. And so, you know, if that's you, is there anybody in here this morning, you know, just raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come up front, but I just want to know if there's people that, that want to be prayed for this morning. Is there anybody here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we had several people that raised their hand this morning. So, so if you just keep your eyes closed, I just want to do this. I want you guys just to repeat this after me with those people that raised their hand, with those people that said that I want to make a choice today and follow Jesus. So you guys repeat this after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I open my heart up to you, and I give my life to you. I thank you for coming into my heart and for changing my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you raised your hand, just do me a favor. Just at, at one of our spots out in the lobby or in the back back here, just grab one of those connect cards, put your name on it, and in and, and a way we can contact you, and just mark that thing as, you know, salvation. Because I want to talk to you about it. We've got people on, on staff at the church that, that just want to talk to you about it and let you know what it means, what's some next steps that we have for you guys. So, thank you. This is going to be the start of something brand new for you. Amen? So we're going to change gears just really quick. We're going to take up the offering before we do baptism. Because after baptism, it's all crazy in here. We're getting pictures and everything, and we rejoicing and having a good time. Amen? So we're going to take up offerings. So I don't know if they passed out offering envelopes before, but if you need an offering envelope, if you're giving by cash, um, just raise your hand. We'll get you an offering envelope. If you're giving by check, don't worry about it. We have, we have several ways that you can give. Um, probably 60% of the people that give, um, they give either online or we have a Venmo account at, at Connect Church of Abilene. Um, so those are ways that you can give. Um, and, and here's the thing. If you're new here, like you're here visiting and you're here for baptism, do not feel like you need to give. Okay, this is just for people that are hooked up with the church and are giving into the church. So don't feel like you, don't feel any pressure. You know, because here, here all we say is just give what God puts on your heart and that's it. So there's several ways that you can give and we gave you those. So one thing that we do is we have an offering confession. We have an offering confession that we, that we say. And so I want you guys to say this offering confession with me, if you would. Are y'all ready? All right, here we go. As I give my tithes and offerings, I confess God is first in my life. I give with a cheerful heart because I love God. In 2020, I am healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you this morning that we are healed and whole. I thank you, Father, that there is nothing missing and nothing broken in our lives, Father, that you are the great physician and you heal it all. Father, we thank you for those that give, and, and Lord, we thank you for what you're doing through Connect Church. Father, you're truly a blessing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you guys can go ahead and take up the offering. So what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and release. If you're getting baptized like you came, come on, Becky. That's what I'm talking about. I told them, I told everybody, I told the people that were getting baptized, we had a little meeting beforehand, right? And I looked at Becky and I said, you know, I'm going to let you talk before you get baptized, but man, you got to keep it like under 10 minutes, right? Everybody knows Becky, you know? So if you're, if you're getting baptized, go ahead and go to the back and get changed. And uh, if you want to get baptized, 
Come on, you're like, hey, I just, man, I want to get dunked today. I just got it on my heart. Man, we got the water is warm. I think we're about, what, 87 degrees over here. So it's not, it's a lot warmer than it was last night. We put it in last night. It's like 50-something degrees. You know, I could have left it, but I didn't. I could have left it. We could have got some good hallelujahs when you come up out of that water, you know. But we're going to, if you guys would stand with us, we're going to go into some worship while they're changing. And then after they get back out here, um, and then we'll, we'll do baptism. So you guys stand. We're going to worship for a little bit. Our Father, all of heaven, hold your name, sing louder. Let this place erupt with grace. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. 